Okay. Okay. So you can go ahead. Best wishes. Thank you. Right. So I'm Ram Kabir. See, Ram Kabir, Bhakta Samaj of USA. I'm now President Sriman Jitendra Bhai Sanuk Bhai Bhakta. That's our entire Board of Trustees and a direct Bhakta Samaj. Now, the chapter of chair. I'm now uh, leaders. But it's up so no. Bhakta Zoom Milan. Maswagat Karuchum. So I'm now. हार्दिक राम कबीर सप्रेम राम कबीर और आज आप प्रार्थना थी शुरू कर सू पी थोड़ा वर्ड्स हूँ आप एना विषे कही जूम सेशन और कबीर साहेब ने अपने सदगुरु ने याद कर एक आज साखी सदगुरु ने लैसू त्यारबाद डॉक्टर स्वाति वर्मा ए वेरी यंग टेलेटेड एनर्जेटिक डॉक्टरेट इन साइकोलॉजी है कि आपने गाइड कर सके व्हाट इज मेंटल हेल्थ व्हाट इज डिप्रेशन व्हाट इज एंजाइटी एंड हाउ डू वी नेविगेट दैट यू नो थ्रू एजुकेशन सपोर्ट एंड मेडिकल और इन द एंड मैं आपने क्वेश्चन एंड आंसर रखी सो तमे तमर क्वेश्चन एंड आंसर चैट माथी तमे आप ही सको क्या तो तमे एंड मा हैंड रेज कर सो तो हैंड रेज कर सो तो आ ज्यादी सेशन है ये बदा म्यूटेड रह से कारण के टू प्रिवेट दी अननेसेसरी एक्सटर्नल नॉइज एट आप रखू है तो एंड में क्यू एने रह से चेट में ते क्वेश्चन गमे तेरे पूछी सको एने आंसर स्वाति एंड में आपसे सो लेटेस्ट ऑफ स्टार्ट विथ असत्यो मे थी प्रार्थना करिए त्यारबाद आप चालू कर सैशन सत्यो मे थी प्रभु परम सत्य तुलजा पुना अंधारे थी प्रभु परम तेज तुलजा महामृत्यु माथी अमृत समीपे नाथ लैजा तुहीणो हूँ छु तो तुझ दर्शन दान दैजा तुझ दर्शन दान दैजा एंड वी प्रे फॉर ऑल दो वी हैव लॉस ऑल अवर लव वन वी हैव लॉस the humanity have lost all those who are suffering and those who are uh, fighting for us in terms of uh, medical staff medical doctors and entire support system so let us pray for their well being aryom तो सौ प्रथम आप सौ अभिनंदन आप रामकवीर पत्र समाज ऑफ यूएसए प्रेसिडेंट और एंटायर बोर्ड ऑफ ट्रस्टी ने बीजा चेप्टर जो नेताओं से आ एक प्लेटफॉर्म अत्य आप सौ पेन्डेमिक ग्लोबल पेन्डेमिक गुजरी रहा है तो समय सोशल डिस्टन्सिंग तो आप फॉलो करता है पर कम्युनिटी डिस्टन्सिंग ना थी जाए तो आप एक बीजा से बता जुदा पड़ी गई है जे आप पहला थी मलता सोशियल गेदरिंग थत ए बधु बंद थी गयु तो कम्युनिटी डिस्टन्सिंग ना थी जाए जुए तो शुरू करू है तो आम आप एक बीजा साथ रही है एक बीजा ने जो रही है तो शू थ अनचार्टेड टेरिटरी से पेन्डेमिक सारी रीते सकसू कारण के अत्यार अपने खबर है कि आप जन्मदिवस बधाने खबर है पर मृत्यु दिवस अपने खबर नहीं अत्य आप एक समाज सेवक श्रीमान दिलीप भाई भिखा भाई भक्त बाजीपुर आप गुम गया चलता चलता हॉस्पिटल गये ही डीज नॉट कम बेक सो इट शोज के लाइफ इज वेरी फ्रेजाइल स्पेशली दीज डेज वेन पेन्डेमिक इज गोइंग सो at least let us get uh, you know educate ourselves also entertain ourselves and keep togetherness as a community and i would say ke 
स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ समाज इज अ भक्तजन दरक भक्तजन ए समाज की स्ट्रेंथ है बड़ है दरक भक्तजन न बड़ ए समाज है ये बने आप बदाय समझी जाइए तो ये ध्यान राखी आप अभिनंदन आप होप कि आप चालू राखी बता पार्टिसिपेट करिए तो शू कि आ एक पेन्डेमिक में आप बहुत सारी रीते पसार थी सकसू और नव प्लेटफॉर्म ऊबी कर सकसू कि भले आप दुनिया में गमे त्या बैठा हो परंतु आप जो कबीर साहेब एक सदगुरु अमरेला नीचे है तो आप सब एक बीजा रही सकी एटलीस्ट डिजिटली एक बीजा ने जो हर हरक उभराई जाए अपने बीजा के वर्षो थी आप मैं ना हो तो हमें नवं नॉम शू ये अपने खबर नहीं हाउ वी आर गोइंग टू सैलिब्रेट वेडिंग्स हाउ वी आर गोइंग टू सैलिब्रेट एनीथिंग सोशियल इवेंट वी नॉट नो एनी धेट टाइम वी मस्ट कीप दीस प्लेटफॉर्म डिजिटल प्लेटफॉर्म अलाइव पार्टिसिपेट सी इच अदर लर्न एंड सपोर्ट इच अदर सो आज कबीर साहेब एक साखी मैंने मेंटल हेल्थ की बात करता है तो याद आ कबीर साहेब कहीं है कारण के अब पेन्डेमिक में शू मेंटल हेल्थ में अपनी पास बे रीते आप सीखी सकी एक अपना सदगुरु जे एटू सरस मन विषे सीखी सीखी गया है तो आप थोड़ा लीए अने बीजू आप डॉक्टर है मेडिकल साइंस है एनी पास थे सीखीशू तो पी अपनी मेंटल जो हेल्थ है ये अपने सारी रीते जाकस तो कबीर साहेब कहे छे कबहूक मन गगन ही चढ़े कबहू मन गगन ही चढ़े कबहू गिरे पाताल कबहू मन गगन ही चढ़े कबहू गिरे पाताल कबहू मन अनुमने लगे कबहू जाबे चाल तो कहवा मांगे शू कबीर साहेब कि आ मन न स्वभाव केव कि भाई एक दिवस आपने पोते अनुभवी छे कि एक दिवस आपने गगन में चढ़ा दी आप जाने एट बदा एम स्मार्ट है कि होशियार है कि जी रीते बदी रीते अपने जे कहीं अंदर थी आपने वो भाव लावे अबाउट अवर सेल्फ के गगन पर चढ़ा दी और पीछे बीजे क्षण एवं विचार लावे एवं भाव लावे कि आपने पाताल में उतारी दी कि भाई मैं जीवन में कशु करू नहीं कि हूँ एम आई लाइक आधु शू है एम कि आई एम नॉट वर्थ इट आई एम नॉट गुड इनफ यू नो स्वभाव है बात करे कबू मन अनुमन लगे एम के कई बार कॉन्सन्ट्रेशन में आप कॉन्सन्ट्रेशन तरफ जाइए तो कई बार आप कबू चाबे चाल कि संसारिक में आप अटवाई जाइए एम विचार में आप जता रही है तो जे मन ना स्वभाव है कि एक दिवस गगन में लई जाए और बीजे दिवस पाताल में लई जाए अने पीछे घनी बार कॉन्सन्ट्रेशन सारी जगह करा कॉन्सन्ट्रेशन खराब जगह करा फोकस आप संसारिक बटावे तो आप जो कि इवन आप शू कही गौतम बुद्ध कहता कि द होल फंक्शन ऑफ द बॉडी द एंटायर मेन फंक्शन ऑफ द बॉडी इज टू कैरी द माइंड अराउंड बिकॉज थ्रू द माइंड वी एक्सपीरियंस इंटरप्रिट एंड कंट्रीब्यूट अफकोर्स आप हाथों यूज करिए बॉडी ए माइंड ने अनुसरण करे तो आप के चालू राखी तो आज डॉक्टर स्वाति वर्मा है ये तो मेडिकली आपने शीखव से परंतु मेंटल हेल्थ साचवा योग साइंस एटल बढ़ू सरस कही गयु पतंजलि योग एने आप योग सूत्र कही है बाइबल ए इट्स अ वंडरफुल थिंग इफ वी फॉलो धेट देन वी केन कीप अवर माइंड कंट्रोल कारण के शू कि आप यूनिवर्सिटी में जाइने आज फॉर्मल एज्युकेशन तो लई सकी परंतु कोईपण जगह आपने अपनी माइंड कंट्रोल माइंड के रीते फंक्शन करे ये बता कोई शीखवत नहीं आज आप फोन लाई तो ये एटली मोटी इंस्ट्रक्शन बुक आए पर आप जन्म लीए तरह अपनी कोई माइंड विषय इंस्ट्रक्शन बुक आपने मलती नहीं सो सदगुरु है अपना यू नो कबीर साहेब है कि बता बीजा बदा ग्रंथों एम आपने मन विषे घूम जाए आप जो प्रेक्टिस् करे योग साइंस में तो वी केन कंट्रोल फ्रॉम देट साइड और जयर जय मेडिकल साइंस की हेल्प जो है तरह आप मेडिकल साइंस की हेल्प लीए आप जुं कि 
અત્યારે દક્ષિણ કેલિફોર્નિયામાં આપણી એક બ્યુટિફુલ યંગ દીકરી નીમા ને ગુમાવી તો એ એક પોસ્ટમોર્ટમ ડિઝીઝ મેન્ટલ હેલ્થનો ઇસ્યુ તેમાં ગુમાવી પરંતુ જે બીજી બધી મેન્ટલ હેલ્થ જે ડિપ્રેશન એન્ઝાયટી હોય અને આ પેન્ડેમિકમાં વધી જાય છે સ્વાભાવિક રીતે કારણ કે ફાઇનાન્શિયલ લોસ સોશિયલ લોસ ફેમિલી લોસ આ થાય એ બધાને લીધે આપણી મન પર ગંભીર અસર થાય તો આપણે એને કેવી રીતે સાચવીએ શરીરને સાચવતા તો આપણે શીખી ગયા છે પણ મનને તો મેન્ટલ ઇમ્યુનિટી ઇઝ વેરી વેરી ઇમ્પોર્ટન્ટ કારણ કે પેલી ઇમ્યુનિટી ફિઝિકલ ઇમ્યુનિટી તો આપણને ખબર જ છે સારો ખોરાક ખાવ એક્સરસાઇઝ કરો પણ મેન્ટલ માટે તો આપણે પ્રાણાયામ છે એ બધું કરીએ હજી આપણે ફીડિંગ વોટ આર બી ફીડિંગ અવર માઇન્ડ કોન્સ્ટન્ટલી નેગેટિવ ન્યૂઝ જો ચાલુ રાખીએ તો માઇન્ડ એને પકડી અને સબકોન્શિયસમાં લઈ જાય અને પછી આપણા પર અસર કરે એટલે એ કોન્સ્ટન્ટ નેગેટિવ ન્યૂઝ આપણે સ્ટોપ કરવા જોઈએ ગોસિપિંગ બધું બંધ કરવું જોઈએ પ્રાણાયામ જે ભાઈ કેટલા બધા બધા એની તો બધાને જ ખબર છે આપણે તો દેશથી આવેલા છે મેડિટેશન રિલેક્સિંગ મ્યુઝિક તમારી સાઉન્ડ સ્લીપ કેવી રીતે વધારવી તેના માટે તમે કરી શકો ગ્રેટિટ્યુડ તમે ગ્રેટફુલ શા માટે છો આજે આપણે વિચાર કરો પચાસ વર્ષ પહેલાં ચાલીસ વર્ષ પહેલાં આપણે બધા ખેડૂતના દીકરાઓ હતા દેશમાં હતા ત્યાંથી અહીંયા આવીને કમ્ફર્ટ અને લક્ઝરીમાં જીવતા છે આપણે આજના જમાનામાં તો આપણે સો મચ ગ્રેટફુલ ટુ ધ સદગુરુઝ બ્લેસિંગ એન અવર હાર્ડ વર્ક એન અવર હાર્ડ વર્ક ઓફ અવર ફોર ફાધર્સ એને ભૂલવું નથી જોઈતું આપણે પ્રેયર્સ મેડિટેશન રિલેક્સિંગ મ્યુઝિક ઇન્સ્પિરેશનલ એ બધી વસ્તુને લીધે આપણે માઇન્ડને જો ફિટ કરશું તો મેન્ટલ હેલ્થ રહેશે તો હવે હું વધારે સમય નથી લેતો પણ અભિનંદન એન્ટાયર બોર્ડને અને કબીર સાહેબને આપણે હંમેશા દરેક સામાજિક પ્રસંગે યાદ કરીશું અને એમાંથી કંઈ શીખીશું એને આપણે મેન્ટલી સમજી શકશું હૃદયમાં ઉતારી શકશું અને પછી હૃદયમાંથી આપણા દૈનિક જીવનમાં આપણે કેવી રીતે એને એપ્લાય કરીએ કારણ કે દરેકના ઘરમાં ગાદીમાં ફોટો છે કે સંસ્થાઓમાં ફોટા છે કે મૂર્તિ છે પણ એને આપણે આપણે દૈનિક જીવનમાં કેવી રીતે લાવી એનો પ્રયાસ આ બોર્ડ કરે છે તો બોર્ડને ખાસ અભિનંદન અને લેટેસ્ટ સપોર્ટ ઓલ કે વી કન્ટિન્યુ વી એજ્યુકેટેડ એન્ટરટેન ટુગેધર તો આજે મેન્ટલ હેલ્થના ઇસ્યુ પર આપણે કેવી રીતે સમજીએ તો તેને માટે આપણી પાસે વેરી યંગ બ્યુટિફુલ ટેલેન્ટેડ ડૉક્ટર સ્વાતિ વર્મા એન્ડ સી ઇઝ ડૉક્ટરેટ ઇન ક્લિનિકલ સાયકોલોજી ફ્રોમ શિકાગો સ્કૂલ ઓફ સાયકોલોજી એન્ડ સી ગ્રેજ્યુએટેડ ફ્રોમ ધેર ઓલ્સો સી ગોટ માસ્ટર્સ એન્ડ ધેન સી સ્પેન્ડ ફાઇવ યર્સ ઇન વર્કિંગ એઝ અ થેરોપેટિક સ્કૂલ સિસ્ટમ ટુ ગેટ ધ પ્રેક્ટિકલ એક્સપીરિયન્સ ઓફ ધેટ એન્ડ ધેન સી હેઝ અર ઓન પ્રેક્ટિસ નાવ એન્ડ હર ફોકસ ઇન ધ બિગિનિંગ વોઝ ધ ચિલ્ડ્રન બટ ધેન સી સ્ટાર્ટેડ ઇન્ક્લુડિંગ એક્સપેક્ટિંગ પેરેન્ટ્સ એન્ડ ન્યુ પેરેન્ટ્સ બીકોઝ ધ હેવ ધેર ઓન ઇસ્યુઝ હેવ સી હેઝ વર્ક વિથ અ એઝિયન કમ્યુનિટી સી હેઝ અ લોટ ટર્મ્સ ઓફ એક્સપીરિયન્સ and she is so much kind hearted to willing to bring awareness in the community entire community not only bhakta community but community at large so we all can remove the stigma behind mental health mental health is just like any other apne gutan you know we have a total knee replacement karayu che so many heart surgery karavi che so why not t- treat mental issue mental health as just like any other issue so we should be talk you know we should talk we should bring it on the table what we call it so i will invite at this time um dr swati verma to guide us what is mental health why it is important what can we do mentally what the family can play a role and support system so we all can prevent this such a tragedy just happen and not only that but bring the joy and love in life So, Samri Ram Kabir, Swati, take over. Thank you so much. Um, I'm just going to just share my screen really quick. Okay. Well, thank you so much for having me. Um, I wanted to just start off by sending my deepest condolences to the Bhakta family and community for your loss of Nima. Um, I did not know her personally, but I do hope that her story can help spread awareness, get us talking like we are today, 
um, and just inspire the much needed awareness of mental health as well as removing the stigma that we often experience in our South Asian community. Um, so I thank you very much for the introduction. Um, I will go over a little bit about myself as you just heard. Um, I did graduate, I'm from Chicago, Illinois. I graduated with my doctorate in clinical psychology in 2015. Um, I did spend five, about five years working in therapeutic day school settings, which are um, basically private schools for kids who have a hard time um, emotionally and behaviorally in a regular public school. So these schools kind of um, focus in on that and help out those kids with special needs. Um, currently, alongside um, working in the schools about two years ago in 2018, I started my own practice. Um, for the most part, my, my um, specialty has been working with children and adolescents. Um, until about a year ago, I actually was pregnant myself. Um, and I started to realize the need for, especially for minority therapists, um, to be able to work with expecting and new parents. Um, so that sort of has become a lot more of my focus in the last year. Um, okay, so I wanted to just start off with um, very basic level, what is mental illness? Um, I will go a little bit more into, specifically into anxiety and depression as those are the two most common mental illnesses. Um, but let's start with just what is mental illness? Um, so mental illness are health conditions that involve changes in emotion, thinking, or behavior, um, or a combination of these. And they're often associated with distress and her um, problems functioning in social work or family activities. So one of the biggest things with mental illness is that um, it impacts all areas of a person's life. So it impacts their day-to-day um, -day living, um, their ability to go to work, go to school, those types of things, um, or even just interacting in social settings. How common is mental illness? Um, in a given year, nearly one in five, which is about 19% of US adults experience some form of mental illness. One in 24% has a serious mental illness, which um, this is defined as a mental behavioral emotional disorder, not including developmental or substance use disorders, which result in severe fu uh, functional imp impairment and again, affect uh, major life activities and experiences. So some examples of these are major depressive disorders, schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. And again, we'll go a little bit more into what um, some of those in just a few minutes. And then finally, one in 12, which is about 8.5% of the population has a diagnosable substance use disorder. So this would be something like um, addiction to drugs and or alcohol. So I will go over quickly just some of the most um, common types of mental illness. And then, like I said, I'm going to focus a little bit more on mood disorders and anxiety disorders. Um, so for now, I'll just kind of describe what those are. Mood disorders include things like depression, bipolar disorders, um, and then anxiety disorders have um, a lot more under the umbrella, which include panic disorders, um, obsessive compulsive disorder, uh, social phobia, specific phobias, things like that. Um, so I'm going to save those two for, um, for us to kind of go over a little bit more in depth, but just before we do that, um, so we have an understanding of just some of the other disorders that are out there. Um, there's personality disorders, which are described as a pattern of varying mood, self-image, and behavior. Um, the biggest thing about personality disorders is that they tend to significantly impact our relationships. So relationships with loved ones, relationships with um, friends, family, things like that. Then there's psychotic disorders, which affect how a person thinks, feels, behaves, and often includes a loss of reality. So this would include um, like delusions, hallucinations, so um, thinking and hearing the voices that other people may not hear, um, or seeing things that other people do not see. Then there's eating disorders, which is one um, when one experiences severe disturbances in their eating pattern, and that tends to affect them both emotionally and um, physically. So examples of these would be um, bulimia or anorexia. And then trauma-related disorders is when someone has experienced or witnessed one or more life-threatening experiences. Um, and this might include things like flashbacks, nightmares, anxiety, recurrent thoughts, um, 
things like that. And then finally, there's substance abuse disorders. Like I said, it's caused by addictions to drugs and or alcohol. Um, so typically, before we kind of get to, um, you know, any diagnosing any other disorders, whether that's depression or anxiety, things like that, substance abuse is always ruled out. So that's that we want to make sure that's not playing a factor in the way that the person is feeling um, or behaving. Okay, so I'm going to start with anxiety. Um, so like I said, anxiety is, uh, is actually one of the, the um, most common disorders. Um, occasional anxiety is a part of, uh, of everyone's life, right? So um, it actually often serves as a protective measure for us. Um, so let me give, for example, if you're driving a car and someone cuts you off, right, you might experience um, your heart racing, palm sweating, things like that, because that's, that's for us a protective measure for us to stay safe, right? Um, but what anxiety disorders, when it becomes a little bit more problematic is when that temporary worry or fear, those kind of feelings that you get when someone cuts you off, those are hard to, those don't go away um, as easily, right? And they come a little bit more frequently. So um, for a person with anxiety disorder, the anxiety doesn't actually go away, um, like I said, right away, but it can actually get worse over time. Um, the one that I will focus a little bit more on is generalized anxiety disorder. This is kind of the most, um, again, common overarching anxiety disorder. And here are just some of the um, symptoms that come with that. Feeling restless, on edge, being very easily fatigued, um, having a hard time concentrating or the mind going blank. This one is actually interesting because I do see this a lot more, especially with kids, children and adolescents, is that having difficulty concentrating. Um, a lot of times people will come and, you know, be diagnosed with ADHD or say they have, you know, they're not able to do work. Um, so it's important to kind of rule out, is it ADHD and difficulty concentrating or is it that they're having anxiety and thinking about other things because of the anxiety. Um, and then other symptoms are being irritable, having muscle tension, um, difficulty controlling uh, worry, feelings of worry, um, and then sleep problems. So either a hard time falling asleep or staying asleep, a restlessness, waking up frequently, um, unsatisfying sleep. How common is anxiety? Um, it's actually the most common disorder. So um, it affects 40 million adults in the United States, 18 and older. Um, they're highly treatable, yet only 36.9% of those suffering actually do receive treatment. Um, people with an anxiety disorder are three to five times more likely to go to the doctor and six times more likely to be hospitalized for psychiatric disorders than those who do not suffer from anxiety disorder. Um, going to the doctor is actually a very common, uh, we'll talk a little bit about signs um, that we can pick up on for people who are experiencing anxiety, but going to the doctor for physical complaints is actually one of the most common things that we see uh, initially when it comes to anxiety. So that might be headaches, stomach aches, um, things like that. And then anxiety disorders develop from a complex set of risk factors, some of those including genetics, brain chemistry, personality, and life events. Okay. And then um, a little bit more about depression. So depression is also one of the most common um, mental health disorders. So uh, typically we see this, again, similar to anxiety, sadness is a part of life, right? That comes and goes and a very normal feeling. Um, but when we see this sort of depressed mood for longer than two weeks, that includes some of these, um, some of these symptoms that I will be talking about, that's when we know it might be a little bit more than just sadness. So some of these symptoms might be persistent, sad, anxious, or sort of an empty mood, um, feelings of hopelessness, so not really having things to look forward to or being excited about things um, that might be coming up, uh, pessimism, irritability, feelings of guilt, worthlessness, or helplessness, um, a loss of pleasure in things that you typically feel very excited about, right? So if you um, love doing yoga and you just don't have an interest in doing that anymore, that might be a sign, um, you know, things like that. Decreased energy or fatigue. So uh, sleep, as far as sleep is concerned, it can be uh, an increase in sleep for when it comes to depression. 
Um, moving or talking slowly, feeling restless or having trouble sitting, again, difficulty concentrating, remembering or making decisions, like we sort of talked about with anxiety. Um, appetite or weight changes, thoughts of suicide or death. Um, and again, when it comes to sort of that physical piece of it, a lot of aches or pains. So that can be headaches, cramps, um, digestive problems. And typically when you go to the doctor and you get tests done, you're not really finding anything physically you know, going on. That, that might be a sign that something else emotionally might be going on. As far as depression is concerned, it's um, again, very common. Globally, more than 264 million people of all ages suffer from depression. It's actually the leading cause of disability worldwide um, and a major contributor to overall global burden of disease. Um, more women are affected by depression than men, um, but men are also affected. Um, it can lead to suicide, and then there's also a lot of psychological and pharmacological treatments um, for moderate and severe depression. So for both of these, anxiety and um, depression, one thing to kind of keep in mind is that there are, there are treatments out there. There are things that can help. Um, next, I kind of wanted to go a little bit into signs of anxiety and depression. So whether you're kind of uh, looking for these signs in yourself or for other people, I think these are important to know how these might manifest in someone. Um, particularly for depression, uh, there's two kind of major ways that these can um, manifest in a person. So the first is internalizing behavior. And what that means is when someone doesn't express their feelings outwardly, but maybe kind of holding those feelings in, um, shutting down, not talking, sleeping a lot, not wanting to go out, um, you know, those types of things. So that's called internalizing behaviors. And, and typically you see people feeling more tired, um, eating less than usual, and complaints of some uh, physical symptoms. And then there's externalizing behaviors, which is when someone outwardly expresses their feelings. Um, so this might be anger, irritability, kind of very on edge and touchy. Um, so maybe anything you sort of say to them, they might, they might get frustrated easily. Um, that's more externalizing behaviors. Uh, with externalizing behaviors or internalizing behaviors, you might, be, you might also see an increase in um, drinking, drugs, alcohol, those types of things, um, as because people tend to use those as a way to cope. Um, and then anxiety, again, we sort of touch on this, but excessive worry um, about things that maybe other people are not as worried about, right? Um, and then changes in appetite and or sleep, constant sort of checking behavior. So if you're consistently worried about, you know, um, is my family going to be okay? Am I okay? Those types of things um, that might be a sign. And then um, just making sure it, or making sure, you know, even small things like making sure I didn't say anything wrong in this conversation. You know, those types of excessive worries um, can often be signs of anxiety. As far as gender differences, um, especially in the South Asian community, um, so more often, though not always, what we'll see is women may internalize behaviors a little bit more. Um, so you'll see with women, they will sort of shut down. Um, they will you know, not really be as talkative, like we talked about some of those internalizing behaviors, but also another way for them to maybe cope um, might be you know, getting themselves very busy in something else. So just taking care of the kids, taking care of the family, the house, all that kind of stuff, not really talking about you know, kind of avoiding what they're feeling. Um, and then men might more frequently externalize these behaviors. So you might see a little bit more irritability, anger, frustration um, in men. Again, these are not solely, you know, for men and women, but that's a lot of what we see in the differences between gender and how they, um, how they show what they're actually experiencing emotionally. Um, and then there's also generational differences, which, um, you know, obviously in older generations, it's a little bit harder, especially in the South Asian community, for people to talk about their feelings. Um, but I think the biggest thing generationally that we might see is more um, visits to doctors, more uh, what we call somatic complaints, which are essentially physical issues going on. So you might see more headaches, more 
stomach aches, more needing to go to the doctor more frequently, that kind of stuff, um, which is, again, for the older generation, a way to kind of, maybe they're not even aware of what they're feeling or what's going on, but those physical symptoms are a big sign of any anxiety or depression. Okay. Next, I wanted to quickly get a little bit into what we call perinatal mood disorders. Um, so I will touch quickly on this, um, a little bit more about just postpartum, and, um, and then we'll go into a little bit more of uh, just the South Asian community and how, how to handle some of these things. Um, so perinatal mood disorders are actually defined, um, what perinatal is, is it's defined as mood disorders during and post-pregnancy. Um, typically, these last can, these can last or these can occur anytime during pregnancy or one year post-pregnancy. So it may not be right away after uh, pregnancy, but it can be up to one one year later. Um, what they say that people start seeing a lot more of these signs is so once you have a baby. The first couple weeks tend to be, you know, especially in our community, um, when there's a lot of people around, there's, you know, family members coming to help, there's people who are very excited to see the baby, so you might be a little bit more busy in those first couple weeks. When all of that sort of dies down and people are more on their own, everyone else goes back to their regular life, is when you might see the onset of some of these um, disorders a little bit more. So the different types of mood disorders, perinatal mood disorders, are Depression, anxiety, again, which we'll touch on a little bit more, um, but there's also panic disorder. So that's, um, you know, someone might be getting a lot more panic attacks. It's, it's a form of anxiety. Um, traumatic stress, so that can include um, any stress, any trauma that the mother or the child experienced during birth. Um, OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, so constant worry, constant checking about, you know, is my baby okay, is my baby breathing, those types of things. Um, bipolar disorders, and then psychosis. So again, um, we will touch a little bit more on the anxiety and the depression piece on this. Um, there is a difference between baby blues and depression. So a lot of times we'll hear, you know, baby blues, which is a very common term for that sadness that a mother might experience. Um, right after pregnancy. So what that, um, the difference between these is if that sadness continues to last past two weeks um, post-pregnancy, then we can consider that um, depression because the first two weeks, the body is, you know, uh, experiencing a lot of physical change, emotional change, hormonal change. Um, and, you know, that it makes sense a little bit more why you're, you might experience some of that sadness. But if that continues to go on past two weeks, then it's considered depression. Um, a couple more facts about this. One in seven mothers experience postpartum depression or anxiety. And um, it's not only limited to mothers. So one in 10 fathers actually experience postpartum depression too. Um, they can also experience anxiety, panic disorders, all the other perinatal mood disorders. So it's not just limited to mothers. Um, suicide is one of the three leading causes of maternal death. Um, and unfortunately, these are not talked about very much. These disorders in general are not talked about very much, um, but especially post-pregnancy. So etiology, which um, essentially means what are some of the causes of perinatal mood disorders? Um, some of the biggest ones are physical. So there's a genetic component to it, right? So you're more likely to experience some of these things if there's family members who might have experienced some of these disorders. Um, hormonal changes, uh, women's bodies go through a lot of different hormones um, during and post-pregnancy. Psychosocial factors, so these include people who don't have a lot of support, not a big um, support network, maybe someone who moved away from their family, their friends, um, that can increase the possibility to get some of these a little bit more. Then there's this, you know, perfectionism, this, this kind of mentality that, um, you know, the superwoman mentality, as they call, which um, essentially means that mentality that, you know, you can kind of get back to everything you were doing before pregnancy quickly, you're supposed to physically bounce back fast, um, take care of the baby, know how to be a mom or a dad right, right after having a kid. Um, some other stressors include sleep disruption. So um, obviously a lack of sleep when a baby is born, 
poor nutrition, so not putting yourself first when it comes to eating, maybe forgetting to eat when you have a baby because you're so busy and focused on the baby. Um, any health challenges that a baby or mom experiences during um, or post-pregnancy. Any other interpersonal stress, so the stress that may be caused by um, you know, relationships, things like that, that uh, you know, having a baby might add to. And then cultural stress and barriers. So um, we talked a little bit about gender roles, but basically that means this sort of um, understanding that women are kind of inherently meant to know how to take care of a baby. Um, and then with men as well, sort of that stress of needing to provide for the family, being the breadwinner, those types of things. Okay. Um, so a couple um, notes on just signs of postpartum depression and anxiety. Like I said, it's important to kind of um, evaluate these not just after having a baby, um, but during pregnancy, as well as particularly more if, if these are occurring more than two weeks post-pregnancy. So these are similar, similar signs as you know, to general depression and anxiety, but a couple, a couple things that are different. Um, so for depression, that sadness, a lot of crying, feeling overwhelmed, irritability, agitation, anger, um, sleep disturbance. Obviously, that one's a little bit harder to kind of um, kind of distinguish because new parents do sleep less. Um, but if that becomes more chronic and an inability to sleep or sleeping too much, that might be a sign. Uh, mood swings, apathy, which means kind of this mindset of not caring. Um, not really, you know, not really investing too much energy in anything, that kind of stuff, and then exhaustion. Um, and then with anxiety, similar to depression, there's that normal new parent worry, right? When, when you're a new parent, um, there's those worries about, is my baby okay? Is my baby being sad? Um, those types of things. But um, when it becomes a little bit more concerning, again, is if it's lasting a little bit longer, um, and then other possible symptoms might be panic attacks, insomnia, uh, low appetite, certain fears like losing control or illness or danger or fainting. Um, and then physical symptoms might include shakiness, dizziness, shortness of breath. And then these are some of the unexpected signs and symptoms of postpartum um, mood disorders. So some things we might not pick up as, oh, this might be something emotionally going on with, with the person. Um, so this can include agitation, um, some of these we've talked about, but anger, um, insomnia, mania, which is basically this um, pattern of not sleeping too much, having a lot of energy, um, staying up for nights on end, speaking very quickly, um, having a distorted thought process, which means having, you know, um, not being able to coherently put together um, sentences and thoughts and things like that. Then there's the non-intrusive or non-psychotic intrusive thoughts. So like I sort of talked about that constant fear of what if I hurt the baby, um, things like that. Protectiveness and hypervigilance. Um, and then an increase in any drug or alcohol dependence, again, to use as a coping skill. So what are some of the myths and stigmas of perinatal mood disorders? Um, so what are some things that prevent people from seeking help? So a lot of times, like I said, feelings that guilt about not being able to take on the new rules and responsibilities. So like, especially as I talked about in women, it's sort of this um, understanding that they should be able to, this is inherent, that they should know how to take care of a baby and as well as taking care of themselves and the family all that kind of stuff um, right when they have a child, right? But that's, uh, unfortunately, that's not reality. And um, it's, it's not only meeting a, hu a whole new person by meeting your child, but you're also kind of coming to terms with your own self, right? Being a new person, new responsibility, new identity, all that kind of stuff. Um, most people actually don't even recognize that they're depressed or anxious. They might think that it's due to them failing as a parent. So um, those feelings of I'm not good enough, I'm not a good enough parent, I um, should be able to do this and I can't. Um, oops, sorry. Yes, 
Um, and then I talked a little bit about gender roles and expectations. So again, for moms, sort of that um, expectation to bounce back physically, socially, if they're working, that adds on another stressor um, to be able to kind of give their 100% to both their job and their home life. Um, but also for dads, there's that pressure of being the breadwinner, um, bringing home the money, taking care of the family financially. Those are some gender roles that, um, that can increase uh, the ability to get some of these anxiety or depression, some of these mood disorders. Um, and then there's that understanding that there's a difference between mental disorders and medical disorders. Um, typically, especially in the South Asian community, medical help is much more widely accepted. So if we have um, back pains, no one's hesitant to go to the doctor. If you have diabetes or cancer or anything like that, you will, you will seek treatment, um, but it's a lot more stigmatized and there's not as much acceptance in um, seeking treatment when it comes to mental health. Um, and we'll get a little bit into that, a little bit more into that too. So this was just a nice, um, so Postpartum Support International is actually um, the organization that helps people learn about um, perinatal mood disorders, but also is a great support for people who need help. So they have, um, you know, chat groups for moms and dads. They have a, a support uh, calling line. They have a text line, which I have these all in the slides, some of the resources out there. Um, but I did really like their motto. So um, what they say is that you are not alone. Other parents experience this as well, even though it's not talked about very much. Um, connection and support will help you. So the more sort of support you have between family, between friends, with the spouse, that will definitely help you. Um, you are not to blame. And I think that's one of, again, the misconceptions uh, that are inherent in a lot of parents that this is something I cause. So they say this is not something you cause. This is also not a reflection of your ability to be a parent, to be a mother or a father. And then the biggest sort of takeaway is that with help, you will be well. So all um, postpartum perinatal mood disorders are treatable. It's just a matter of finding the right resources, um, whether that's therapy or medications. Um, it's, it's all treatable with the right support. It's a sign of strength to reach out and it will get easier with time. So I wanted to um, kind of give some resources. Like I said, I wanted to also give some hope as I just talked about that these disorders are also treatable um, and don't last forever. And the biggest things can be therapy and medication that can help. Um, and obviously this is something to talk to one's doctor about, but there are many medications that are safe um, even while breastfeeding. And I know that's a big, big reason why people might, you know, not want to get treatment or not want to take medications, but there are a lot that are safe for um, the mother. And then these are just some resources out there. Like I said, they have uh, a 1-800 line that is sort of a hotline that can help with um, in, not only just the individual, not just the parents, but also provides direct support for the family as well. Um, then they also do consultation groups for moms and dads. And then um, there's also a text line that you can text to get some um, more immediate support when it comes to perinatal mood disorders. Okay. So um, I wanted to touch a little bit on just the South Asian community. I know that's part of why we're here and um, why there's so much resistance and kind of getting help um, when it comes to mental illnesses. So I think one of the biggest things is lack of education on mental health. So like I sort of talked about, um, you know, people may not even realize they're experiencing some of these things. They might just think it's something wrong with them. Um, so the more we sort of talk about it, the more we're educated about this is something that's, you know, biological, neurological, can be genetic, um, you know, it's not your fault. Those types of things um, can, can help us maybe speak out a little bit more. Um, I already talked a little bit about gender roles, um, but basically that, that sort of understanding or that stigma that men are, you know, strong and they shouldn't be talking about their feelings. Their role is mainly to provide for the family. Um, those things uh, make, make it hard for men to 
men and women, but um, men to kind of talk about their emotions and what they're feeling and what they're going through. Um, women, there's also that gender role of, again, you know, they should be able to take care of the household, children, um, family, uh, and even if they're working, they should kind of just be able to bounce back, whether that's physically, emotionally, all that kind of stuff, um, and not really talk about their feelings. Again, a lot of it comes down to not talking about what you're experiencing emotionally. Um, there's also a myth that asking for help is a weakness, which I think is one of the biggest things um, that comes up, comes in the way of getting help. So there's sort of this understanding that um, I should be able to deal with this on my own. If I don't, I'm kind of weak, uh, which is definitely a myth. Asking for help is very hard. It requires a person to be vulnerable um, and it helps save lives. So in Instead of kind of seeing it as a weakness, I think we should start seeing it as a strength because it's very, you know, it's hard to do, but it's, it's how we help each other. Um, and then there's this belief in the South Asian community that problems should stay within the family. So you shouldn't be talking to medical providers or mental health providers about things that are going on in the family, whether that's family dynamics, whether that's something that's personally going on with you. Um, and then I touched on this a little bit, but just that difference in views of medical versus mental health. Um, I think it's important to understand that mental health does have a very genetic biological component to it. So it's not something that, you know, can just go away if you stop thinking about it or if you try hard enough. Um, it's very similar to any medical um, issues that we come across, whether that's, again, diabetes, cancer, back pain, leg pain, all that kind of stuff. We're, we're okay with asking for help with that. Just as similar to that, we should be okay with asking for help when it comes to mental health. I like to kind of see it as just a different part of your body that you're treating. So, you know, whether it's um, instead of having back pain, treating the back, you're treating the brain, right? Which is a, a very vital part of your body. Um, oh, and then the last thing, sorry, is because of just these concerns, there's a lot of shame, there's a lot of stigma, um, we feel judged often, and that creates some guilt in even wanting to ask for help or talking about it. So what can we do to help? Um, the biggest thing, takeaway that I would like to say is let's start normalizing conversations. Let's talk about mental health. Um, create that space so that people don't feel judged or um, feel comfortable in talking about how they're feeling. So part of that can be asking questions to each other, questions like, how are you feeling? You look a little sad today. You're sleeping a little bit too much. I notice you're getting a lot more headaches. What might be going on emotionally? Um, not only to other people, but also start checking yourself for some of the signs that I talked about. So um, if you're starting to notice yourself not eating as much, um, sleeping a little bit more or feeling uh, more anxious than usual, check yourself and start recognizing that for yourself so that you can start that treatment process. Um, breaking gender roles. Everyone has feelings and everyone needs to work on self-care, um, whether you're, you know, any gender. Um, it's important to first take care of yourself. Otherwise, it's very hard to take care of the people around you. Um, and that includes taking time for yourself. Uh, and then let's not judge other people. So if someone's coming to talk to you about their feelings, let's try to create that, like I said, open space for people to talk about. And then lastly, how do therapy and medications help? So therapy is um, basically a more frequent treatment. So it's usually about once a week, um, it would, would be typical for therapy, uh, where you kind of go and talk to someone about about your feelings and what, how you're doing. Um, so what this helps with is provides us a non-biased person to talk to. So often if we kind of go to our family members and we say, you know, this is what's going on, you, the family members or the friends, they have a biased view and won't, won't necessarily be able to see everything clearly because they're related to you. Um, so having someone who's kind of outside of that circle, being able to look in and put together the pieces is part of what therapy does. Um, it also helps us organize our own thoughts, feelings, behaviors. So connecting how maybe some of our feelings are leading to us, our behaviors, those internalizing, externalizing behaviors I was talking about. Um, it also helps us get education on what we're experiencing and normalizes mental health. Um, what medication 
can help with is just that genetic biological component that I was talking about. Um, but it also can get us to a place where we're open to therapy. So um, oftentimes, if you're so depressed that you don't even feel like getting out of bed or going to work, um, you might have a hard time saying, hey, let me go talk to someone about this because that motivation piece is not there. Um, with, with medications, what it can do is kind of get you a, feeling a little bit better to be able to be in a place where you can go to therapy um, and work on some of those coping skills. And then finally, um, so these are just some other resources on if you're seeking support or if you're kind of saying, I want to start this process of finding a therapist, maybe talking to someone, how do I even start? Um, these are some really good uh, websites that Psychology Today and Good Therapy are good for generalized um, you know, mental health disorders. You can search by insurance, by um, location, by special specialty as far as what the therapist specializes in. Um, and then southasiantherapist.org is specifically for South Asian uh, providers. So that can give you, uh, if that's something that you're looking for as far as, um, you know, needing someone to connect with and know that cultural piece of it, that's, that's a good place to go to. And then I provided my information, my email, my phone number. So, you know, I know we don't have too much time left, but if after this, if you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, I would be happy to talk, or if you need help finding a therapist, um, I would be happy to help with that too. I have a question. Um, do you have additional resources for family that have been impacted with people with depression that have lost their lives? Because I know that's um, an outlet where there's not actually a lot of support groups for families. Sure. And if you have that, because I've been trying to research and it's very limited over here. Mm -hmm. um, but if you could provide that in the link or the information that you're going to send out to the. Yeah, um, I can definitely send some resources. Um, if you wanted to actually, my email is on there. If you wanted to email me, um, I would be happy to send you some things along. That would be great. Thank you. No problem. Any other questions? I know that was a lot of information. So again, if you have any questions after the fact, um, feel free to reach out and I'd be happy to answer them. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's say you are uh, have anxiety or mild depression um, what are some things to help uh, alleviate that? I know like exercise would be one, mm -hmm. but are there any like vitamins or over-the-counter um, herbs or anything that could help, um, you know, with that mental state? Right. Um, so my experience is not medication. Um, I do more therapy, um, but I would say even starting with talking to, um, you know, a a medical provider about some of these things that you, you're going through. They might be able to help you out with the medication piece of it. Like you said, exercise is great. Um, deep, a lot of the breathing exercises, so um, deep breathing or even yoga, um, something that kind of clears your mind. There's a lot of different like uh, meditations out there. I like to usually start with um, like guided med meditations because those give us a little bit of a framework to kind of work with um, when it comes to starting with meditation. But meditation and yoga, physical exercises, deep breathing, all those things can help um, alleviate some of that. If you're still starting to experience some of that, I would say even, even this part of Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, I have a question. Yes. Okay. How do you handle somebody who has dementia with psychosis as a symptoms? Um, sorry, can you tell me a little bit more about that? Like what kind of information do you require? So someone who's experiencing dementia with psychosis? Uh-huh. Because they've been diagnosed with the dementia with psychosis and they're 90 years old. So you're saying resources for them to get help? Yeah, pretty much. 
Yeah, um, I would say, again, a lot of that is going to be talking to providers, especially medication management. That's going to be a huge piece of it. With psychosis, the biggest thing is getting on the right medications um, because that that's going to significantly, again, help us to get to a place where we can even work with that person. So I would say, again, talking to the medical provider to see it. And the thing with medications, especially when it comes to mental health illnesses, is it's not just one, one thing that fits all, right? So there might be some trial and error to make sure what works for you, um, what sort of how the medications play a role with some of the other medications you might be on, things like that. But getting that medication piece will be primary when it comes to psychosis and dementia. So basically the medication uh, may or may not work 100% for that particular individual. There might be some trial and error um, because again, it's not a one size fits all when it comes to medication. Um, but that's something, like I said, is not my area specifically, um, but I would talk to your primary care. I would talk to a psychiatrist. Um, those are people that can help with that medication management piece. Okay, thank you. And I just saw someone ask to share my contact information. I will go ahead and do that right now. Okay. I think I have one question that I just received on text. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you overcome community fears and find somebody to talk about your personal issues? Okay, yeah, that's a great question. Um, so that's, that's something that, again, I was sort of referring to as far as as a community, um, that's something that talking and, and asking people how they're feeling, that can kind of open up that line of communication um, where people feel comfortable talking about the, some of those things, right? However, if you don't feel comfortable sharing that with, it, with the community, I think a, great, some, a couple great places to start is those websites that I actually have up on the screen. So the Psychology Today Good Therapy. Um, confidentiality is huge when it comes to um, mental health issues, um, all medical issues, but uh, you can seek therapy, especially in this day and age with the, with the pandemic. Um, you can seek therapy, even most uh, therapists are actually doing telehealth. So even uh, without letting anyone know, you can kind of do that on your own too, um, if that's something that you're concerned about as far as the stigma and all that kind of stuff is concerned. So I would say start with maybe those uh, websites that I have up there. Um, and, and again, with finding therapists, I think it's similar to medication. It's going to be who you feel most comfortable. You might find someone that you start talking to and it's just not the right fit. Um, it's okay to kind of change to another provider if it's just not working for you. Great, thank you. Which medications are major, has a side effect of creating this type of uh, illness? All, um, all medications has a side effect. So which could be the major one that creates this type of illness? Yeah. Um, again, I said, so like I said, medication is actually not my area of expertise. Um, so if you're concerned though about any of the side effects that your medications might be having, I would say, talk to your doctor. So the difference between, so I'm a psychologist, um, which I do the therapy piece of it. So I do more of like the once a week, talking to people, helping them, like I was sort of referring to, helping them through, through their thoughts, feelings, behaviors, giving coping skills. Um, but then there's psychiatrists out there who focus a little bit more on that medication management piece that these questions are great for. Um, if you're concerned about any side effects or the medications that you're taking, um, and there's always your primary care doctor that you can go to to ask about these side effects of medication or even to get medication. Yeah, the purpose I asked that question is like most of our community members are either with the diabetic or the you know, prisoners and uh, that, that sort of thing. So, right. And that's, yeah. And that's why I said it's not sort of a one size fits all when it comes to medication. Um, it will also depend on what other medications you're on, um, you know, what other side effects you have from other medications. So there's a lot of different things that go into the medication management piece, which is 
um, why it's important to ask your individual provider what works best for you or what might work best for you. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> if there are no other questions, you may do the conclusion and vote of thanks. Sure. I'm uh, Thank you, Dr. Swati Verma. I think uh, you have opened my eyes personally. I can say that I learned a lot. Uh, thank you for your time and in helping our community. We greatly appreciate it. And hopefully we can do one more session with you, with our youth. This was prepared in last three days, but I think uh, we need to do one more because I feel like uh, I'm connected to you now through yeah. certain issues personally. So I think we'll do one more session if you are okay with that. Uh, secondly, as I stated, you know, in a short notice, uh, first of all, this idea came from our youth committee. Uh, and especially uh, when we lost Nima. I have never met Nima as well, like you stated, but I feel connected to her now. When we see the community is kind of overwhelmed with the response that we got uh, on her death. So this was kind of a tribute to her from SRBS. And hopefully uh, we will not lose more life. We as a community or board are here to help anyone. So please reach out to us. We have young professionals like Dr. Swati who can help. One-on-one -on -one coaching will be done through SRBS. So please just send us a text, any of our trustee, and we'll you know, reach out to you. All your information will be kept very confidential. And then that way, you know, you can feel or you can trust us on that. Also, especially thanks to uh, Bhakta Samaj of Dallas. Very helpful. Uh, Bhakta Samaj of Southern California. Bhakta Samaj of St. Louis, and especially our tech team, our host, Rajubai. Uh, thank you all. And hopefully we will do one more session like this. And Ram Kabir, everyone, be safe. Take care of your own self and your family and surrounding yourself, especially elders. Ram Kabir. Thank you. Um, Dr. Swati, we, we got one more question. What can community do to less the type of illness? I'm sorry, can you that one more time? No, we have one more question in the chat. Uh, what can community do to less the type of illness? What can community do to... What? I'm so sorry, I couldn't hear that. Uh, what can community do to less this type of illness? Oh, to decrease the type of illness, are you saying? Yeah. Okay. Um, sorry about that. Um, I think, again, like I said, it's, it's a matter of bringing awareness to it. So it's a matter of kind of opening up those conversations um, before it gets too, too hard to be able to talk about it or people lose motivation or people are very severely depressed. Um, so picking up on those signs, some of the signs that I talked about, um, when you're noticing with each other or yourself that, you know, you're starting to feel um, more tired than usual, you're starting to feel more anxious, something's not feeling right internally, even if you don't have the right words for that. I think one for everyone to um, ask each other questions about how they're feeling, but also to reach out for help. So when you're starting to notice something is not feeling quite right, that's when, that's when we sort of want to um, encourage everyone to reach out for help. Again, that can be as simple as starting to talk to your primary care um, provider about it, uh, talking to a friend or a family member about it, just to start that conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, I I like to say mm -hmm. words about Nima that uh, Dr. Orman Nima has become 
an absolute uh, wake up call for the entire community. As a matter of fact, uh, in India, it's much, much more uh, voice, much more uh, awareness is uh, spreaded by Dima's death. Many articles are printed in many different languages across the country. And it has become uh, a significant, uh, like perhaps I would say her, her sacrifice, I would, I'm gonna use the word sacrifice of her life to bring the awareness like today, this morning that you are with us here, we, we don't know you, but now we know. And she is the instrumental. So it has given us a, a, a bigger picture, bigger light, the danger out there. Many other communities are also seeking into the education of uh, this particular illness. So be, be uh, on, a, on a ready to receive some more phone calls from other communities. I just want you to know that. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for that. Thank you. And your, your insight, uh, very depth insight on each and every bullet point was very detailed and I have taken note of that. Thank you so much for your wonderful uh, education to us. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And um, again, I send my condolences to the family, to the community for Nima, um, but I am glad that we're able to have this conversation and get some of these, some of this awareness um, out to the community as well. So thank you. Thank you again for having me. All right, thank you all once again. Uh, uh, people watching, uh, especially, give us your feedback. Any question, concern you have, uh, we have a website. You can uh, open bakta.com. Give us your feedback to that website. We also have a suggestion for that as well. And we also have a Facebook page. We have three times a week for social media. You can see more. And we will address that within 24 hours. That is our promise to you. So please do that. Also, Tell us what you would like to hear in the future. So, you know, we can work and focus on those issues and we can address it properly through our SRBS channels. Thank you all once again for joining. Ram Kabir, have a great day.